Hey guys, Sock here from Sock Heat Tech, and in today's video what we're going to do is we are going to be comparing iOS 14 versus Samsung One UI slash Android, and let's see what the brand new iOS 14 brings to the table in terms of customization and how the overall uh, experience of the iOS 14 compares uh, to Android slash Samsung One UI. So we are going to be talking about a bunch of software features, but let me start by talking about the home screen and how you can customize your home screen. So here's the home screens. In the past, in the past, obviously all you could have on iOS was a bunch of apps on a static grid of app icons. Now, as you can see, we have all these various widgets. And of course, Android has had widgets for a long time. Nothing new on this side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look over here at how the widgets can be added to the screen on iOS. So with iOS, what you can do, you can do two things. You can press and hold, all right, and then you can say edit home screen from the menu that pops up, all right. Or what you can do is you can press and hold on an empty area on the screen. That's going to start the wiggle process and then you can go to plus and that's going to allow you to add all kinds of widgets. You've got maps, stocks, notes, you got the photos, the weathers, news, and then you have all these options right over here. And of course, there's going to be even more widgets available as app developers make more and more. So let's uh, grab a stocks widget over here. I'm going to tap on it. It's going to expand that widget further. It's going to give you various sizes. As you can see, we have a large size. We have a rectangular shape. We have a square. All right. And then we have another square with a different uh, internals. So these apps are in fact data rich. Nothing that the, uh, the Android side can't do, the Samsung One UI can't do. So let's grab one and just put it on over here. Okay, if I bring it over here, it's gonna move the applications automatically as you can see. With this one, what you would have to do is you can pinch the screen, you can go into your widgets and you can scroll through all the various options. Again, with the widgets over here, uh, if a widget has multiple options, you just tap on it, that's gonna expand it and give you all the various options. All right, now as you can see, there's many more over here uh, because Android has been in this game for a long time. So you'll see a lot more of these guys in here. But if I wanna add one of these uh, to the screen, all I do is let's tap on this one. Let's grab, okay, and you just dump it. And of course, uh, you can press and hold and you can change the size uh, based on your needs. Let's tap over here, tap on this one, and there we go, all right? So as you can see, it's a little bit more customizable here, but I'm liking the way they did it over here. So uh, press and hold, tap on plus, uh, pick the one that you want. Uh, you also have something known as a smart stack widget. So if I grab this guy, let's grab a bigger size, okay? You can also tap on add a widget. It'll just go right there to the top, all right? Everything else moves down automatically. So it's still not as free as on this one, but this smart stack is something new. So you have a bunch of widgets that you can scroll through as you can see, okay? It intelligently analyzes what widgets you might need most and it stacks them with the order of importance. So that's a nice thing. I like the way the whole thing is, like it's smooth, it's consistent, all right? But there's more customization options right here. You go to widgets, you have more options, at least for now, okay? And uh, the other thing I wanna talk about is, let's, let's look over here. We have a bunch of widgets here, here, and here. Now, if I were to grab this guy here, and if I brought it over over here, uh, strange things just happen, okay? So I just grabbed the widget from one screen, dumped it to the other, and everything is just all over the place. So I hope they do something about that, make it a more cleaner experience where things just don't go out of place. I, I wish I could take the weather widget and put it, let's say, edit home screen. Uh, let's take it. What if I want to put it right here? I can't. It goes back. It has to be all in order, all right? Now with this one, I can grab this, put it over here at the corner, and then I do have a gap here, and I can fill that gap with another application. Here, I just can't move this. If I grab it here, boom, it goes back to its uh, location. Everything has to be top to down. You have much more uh, freedom here. And on top of that, with Samsung One UI, so with this one, let's say I want to move two widgets to this screen, to this guy here. I dump it here. I grab this. I dump it here. 
let's say I did four or five of those. It's too much work. With this one, I can press and hold, select items. Let's select all, all of them. Let's select all of them just to demonstrate. Press and hold. They're all grouped together. Move it over. Dump it right there. See, you can't do that with the iPhone. Again, I'm not going to beat them up too much because this just came out, so I'm sure they're going to refine it and hopefully make it better. So that's the widgets, and the conclusion is that it's nice to have them now, but we need more freedom to move things around so we can make designs like this. I have a clock, I've got two buttons, I can have some space here, another button at the bottom. So all these cool things hopefully will come in time. Another thing that I want to talk about in reference to customization is if I go into my settings, all right, let's go to my settings. Let's go to settings, all right? And then if I scroll down and if I go into my home screen, these are basically all my home screen settings. So it is customizable, I can do things, but that's all. With this one, if I pinch the screen, go to my home screen settings, I've got all these options. I can change the grid of the apps. I can go for uh, things like this. As you can see, I can make the apps bigger. Uh, I can make them smaller so I can even fit more applications. And then I have all these various options to really customize the home screen. But with the iPhone, that's all we have. And again, it's brand new. I know that it just came out a couple days ago. Hopefully, we'll get more uh, options as far as home screen customization uh, is concerned. Now, one thing I want to touch real quick, at the end of all your home screens, okay, you get access to an app library, which is intelligently organized with all the apps that you use uh, most often. On the top, you've got recently added applications. Here we have suggestions, and here we have automatically categorized applications. Also, everything is sorted by order of importance. So uh, iPhone, iOS 14 knows what is important for you. So it makes them nice and large. And then you have folders within folders to access even more applications. So that's the app library. One more thing, if I press and hold, and if I tap here, I can see all my home screens and I can actually hide the ones that I don't want. So if there's a lot of apps on one of the home screens, I just want to hide it. I, I'm not using these applications. I can do that. Just press this after you toggle the edit and just hide what you don't want, okay? Uh, the good thing is, after you do that, you still have access to all these things right here and you can search them, okay? So it's kind of an app drawer, uh, but here we have another kind of app drawer, so that's what we have. Again, I can search for the apps right here and I can search the app library from here. So this is kind of an app drawer uh, that's a little bit different than this one here, but the same concept. I kind of like that it's at the end of all the other home screens. I would like to see something like that on Android too, but again, if I go in here, also I have a lot of ways to customize the actual app drawer as well, all right? So that's the app drawers. Next thing I want to talk about has to do with wallpapers. Again, Samsung One UI, especially One UI, uh, pulls ahead when it comes to wallpapers. Let's go to settings for a minute. Uh, let me go back here to wallpaper. So I have, choose a wallpaper, I got dynamic wallpapers, I got stills, and I got live wallpapers. Now these live wallpapers, if you put them onto the uh, lock screen, when you press and hold, they give you a nice live effect, okay? When you press and hold on the screen, you get a nice effect, but that's all you get. You only get four of these, you cannot download more. Then we have the dynamic, that really is ugly. I don't even know what these are, like they just have these this dynamic element to them, but there are ugly colors, nothing special, no nature, you can't have cars, nothing. That's all, that's the only dynamic wallpapers or live wallpapers you can have here. And then you got your still wallpapers, of course you can use any still wallpaper from your photos. Now with this guy, we have so much more. So let me go to my wallpapers. First and foremost, I can go to my wallpaper store and there's all these various wallpapers, themes, icons, always on displays I can download to crazily customize my phone. But with the wallpapers, I can even have these video wallpapers that I can download. Many of them are free and I can add them to my lock screen. Let me show you a couple of the ones that I have so you can see that what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna go to my stuff. Okay, let's go to wallpapers. So here's one video wallpaper. Just one example. Set on the lock screen, lock the screen, double tap, look at that. I can press and hold to watch the whole thing. Now this is an actual uh, video wallpaper. So if I go inside, let me go back into here. So many of these guys is crazy. I can have things like this. Look at that. 
okay so you don't get things like these on the iPhone on the iPhone everything is limited to this dynamic wallpaper and this slide wallpaper okay and one more thing I'm gonna tap on wallpaper I'll show you one more thing just to give you a real nice example of what's happening here here is just another example all right I can have this on the actual lock screen uh, I can have something like this on the actual lock screen it's just much more customizable so when it comes to the wallpaper game way ahead on the on the Samsung One UI side now iPhone has an option it's called reachability that allows you to use your phone with one hand if you want to activate this you just pull it down like this everything comes down to your level you can interact with it but half the screen disappears uh, and if I pull this down it goes back up so if I have want to access the top side but I'm holding the phone like this I can just swipe down now I can access this app okay so that's great but again with, uh, with Samsung One UI you go to your settings you go into your uh, advanced features you go into your one-handed mode and you are able to activate the one-handed mode all right now all I do is I can choose various options to activate this let's double tap now I got a one-handed phone I can use the entire phone with one hand just like this okay so you don't have to bring it down like this all you do is you bring the entire screen and make it a little bit smaller and you use it with one hand all over the place all right as you can see I can do anything on this phone if I was holding the phone like this now, if I was using my right hand I can just write justified so we have these options on Samsung One UI now another big thing is uh, picture in picture so basically if I let me launch an, an application here now it doesn't support the iPhone doesn't support picture in picture with YouTube yet hopefully it'll come but basically if I was in Netflix and if I was watching a movie let me just play this movie right here all right all right so there we go so I can have it here I can expand it as I'm doing this I can go in uh, to the website and just look at things if I want to and I can also swipe over do some work as I'm watching this I can even put this to the side if I want to that's my picture in picture so hopefully this will be, start working with YouTube as well very soon I can exit out go back to full screen what do I want to do same thing here you can do it with all these apps and you can do it with YouTube so let's launch the YouTube application all right it's right here so let's just uh, search for something let's just for Saki Tech uh, tap on a video here okay let me kill the volume now when I tap the home button I can have the YouTube application right here and I can do stuff on my phone as well that's great now one thing I can do is I cannot resize it that's that will be a nice option to have all right I like the fact you can resize it a little bit but you can you know go around that by having split screen multitasking so let me just do that one more time so if I'm playing this video here instead what I can do is I can uh, do split screen view and now I can have a bigger screen and I can just bring this down and I can do stuff right here as I'm playing with the uh, with the YouTube application I have it on the top bottom whatever okay so that's fantastic uh, again I'm glad that uh, picture in picture finally made its way uh, to iOS 14 now let's continue and talk about some other stuff now we also have a brand new feature on the iPhone that's been on these phones for a while especially again on Samsung One UI so basically let's say I'm in an application I'm doing something uh, let's call let's call myself with this phone so I'm gonna call this phone right now see what happens on the screen all right let's call that phone and as you can see I get a little pop-up view on the top I can move it around decline the call take the call I've been able to do this for a while on my Samsung phone now with the iPhone you can do the same thing all right so if I was in a let me just so let's say I'm reading some kind of news over here okay I'm gonna call back Saki Tech that just called me look at what happens there we go now we have this thing again I can swipe it away but I can't move it around I can expand it but that's it okay but that's brand new something we have had over here again for a long time but again I'm glad these things are coming over to iOS 14 so more people can consider buying an iPhone if they want more customization couple things I'm gonna say final comments is when it comes to iMessages it's way better than the stock messages on the actual One UI that's just a given there's just way more things fun you can have with iMessages if you're a messenger uh, in your iPhone as opposed to this they're more bland more simple and less customizable there's simply much more going on here with iMessage so if you are into iMessage 
this is the phone you're gonna stick with. And it's constantly being improved. On top of that, when it comes to applications, I'll let you know the overall consistency, smoothness, and fluidity of the iPhone is hard to match. Now, that's not to say there's anything wrong with this. This phone actually is more fluid because it has a higher refresh rate. But if, when you download applications, third-party applications, they all behave slightly different. With this one, any third-party application, it's like everything has a solid framework. They, it all feels the same. Sometimes on Android, you can get ridiculous applications that just act ridiculous. They, it feels like they're from 10 years ago. With the iPhone, no matter what application you download, they all behave uh, as smooth, consistent, with the animations, with the fluidity, all the time. So there's definitely a sense of overall consistency to the iPhone that Android side doesn't have because of the applications. As far as the software is concerned, the base software, you know, going to the settings, just scrolling around. Uh, right now, I'll let you know, it. this does feel more, more bouncy, but this is actually smoother because of the higher rate, and there's no lag or stutter, despite the fact that some people claim there is. Not in the latest phones. You go to the settings, it's all the same stuff, okay? It's nice, smooth, and consistent, as you can see. All right, so that was a quick look at iOS 14 versus Samsung One UI slash Android. Just wanted to compare the new features on the iOS 14 with the existing features on the Android to, to show you guys what's going on. Now, I would simply pick whatever pleases me, and you should do the same. I'm not going to say one is better than the other. They both do a great job. This one is more customizable, that's for sure. This one is still a little bit more limited, but I'm loving the fact that they did finally bring the widgets uh, to the home screen, configured configure a little bit, and at least get information uh, at a glance from these applications. All right, so drop your comments down below and let me know which one you prefer. iOS 14, do you like the new stuff, or do you think Samsung One UI is the way to go? Drop those comments below, let me know, and for now, guys, have a fantastic day, all right? All right, so if you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech by clicking that button and also click that bell icon on the side to make sure you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, you can follow me at Saki Tech Online to get the latest updates as well. All right, have a fantastic day.